the first reason why nations become great or the first principle that is responsible for the greatness of individuals nations corporations is called vision please write it down vision vision what is vision vision is the ability to see things as they ought to be and not just as they are the ability to see things as they ought to be not just as they are comma alongside the determination to bring that picture to manifestation the ability to see things as they ought to be and not as they are and then the determination to bring that vision that picture you have seen to manifestation is called vision merely having a wish of a better future a hopeful future is not vision enough that's just imagination well utilized it only becomes vision when you have the picture alongside the determination to walk that picture to fruition nations and organizations are built and become great through the power of vision proverbs 29 18 profound scripture Proverbs 29 18 here's what the Bible says we where there is no vision the people perish the word perish there does not just mean die they veer off the course they decline one version says they cast off restraint where there is no vision the people decline where there is no vision the people cast off restraint and they even perish Hallelujah. Some of the nations and organizations, families and individuals who have ascended realms of greatness in our world today are people who, number one, are governed by vision, clearly defined vision. Now, let me tell you something about vision. There is a threefold dimension to understanding vision. If you want to become a visionary person, number one, you must understand history. Number two, you must understand destiny. Number three, you must understand the unity component of vision. I'm going to explain it. It is impossible to be a visionary person without understanding history. History is very important because it helps us to connect things past to make sense out of things past and then to be able to come up with resolutions that out of those resolutions will come profound pictures that lead us to the future an average the average nigerian today does not even understand the faintest history of nigeria ask the average nigerian today how much how old is nigeria some will say 12 some will say 100 are we together some will say 60. I'm not talking of naive children, even leaders who are occupying government positions. Are we together now? Yeah. We must have an understanding of history. Families must understand their history. Individuals must understand their history. Churches and ministries, there are many, respectfully speaking, churches and men of God in Nigeria who do not understand the history of the church. They do not even know the history of the church in Nigeria. You see, life and destiny is a relay. And it is dangerous when you receive the baton without understanding antecedents. Are we together now? History helps you to know what to correct. It helps you to know what to retain. It helps you to know what to improve upon. Without the knowledge of history, you will not know what is worth correcting. Without the knowledge of history, you will not know what is worth retaining. Without the knowledge of history, you will not know what is worth improving. Some of the most successful organizations, families, and even nations are very meticulous about preserving history. They will go to any length to see and to insist that they build institutions that preserve their history and insist that their citizens have a clear understanding as to where they are coming from. There are many people, for instance, who know more about the history of other nations than their nations, the history of other families than their families. History is very powerful. 
I was just contemplating and trying to rehearse in my mind as much of Nigeria's history that I know. And I found out that I had to take responsibility myself to refresh my understanding. Hallelujah. Most people shout and pray and jump about a new Nigeria, a new Africa, a new world, and they cannot tell you where we are coming from. Hallelujah. History is very important. Your family did not just evolve. What happened that your family became such a great family known to all the community? There must have been a starting point. Are we together? What happened that your family became so poor and the least of the father's stripes? What happened? It's important to know history. If you do not know history, the negative aspects of history will repeat themselves in your life because you will not know what to change. You will not know what to fight. You will not know what to retain. You will not know what to improve upon. We just live in blind regret, hating Nigeria perhaps, hating our families perhaps, hating certain churches perhaps, and not trying to find out where did this come from. If it's an error in doctrine, where did it come from? If it's accuracy of spiritual understanding, where did it come from? The Bible is a compendium of history. Are we together now? Every believer must know how did, how did the Christian faith come about? The Bible documents that. Among the many things that are captured in the Bible is the history, the journey of the believer's faith. So that you are not blindly believing in Jesus just, believing in Jesus just because you are afraid or scared of hell vision hallelujah do you know this complicated nation well not complicated really i would say diverse nigeria is one of the most diverse nations on earth history tells us this is true we call it today the federal republic of nigeria but did you know that history i hope i'm able to remember this now that i want you to know history now <laughs> hallelujah yeah. History tells us that Nigeria, do you know that there are about 371 ethnic groups in Nigeria alone? 371 ethnic groups, 774 local governments. Are we together? Can you imagine that? 36 states, including the FCT, six geopolitical zones. Nigeria. How did Nigeria start? History tells us. Now, of course, being, being a, a, diverse, a diverse group of people, but history would tell us that from the 1900s, in fact, 1900, I recall that history tells us that the British came together, remember? And they brought in, they formed what we call the Northern Protectorate, the Southern Protectorate. 14 years later, January 1st, 1914, Sir Lord Lugard, history will tell us, he brought an amalgamation and it became the protectorate called Nigeria. It was not yet a federal republic. And then by 1960, Nigeria now declared independence and was granted the independence from their British colony. This is what history tells us. Are we together now? Under the leadership of men like... Um, Sir Frederick Lord Lugard. And then do you know that the independence of Nigeria, watch this now, that the independence of Nigeria, when we came together, we were not yet a federal republic. We were a nation. It was in 1963, I recall. I think October, no date was given. I'm, I'm not sure I've seen any date. We just know it's October, 1963, that Nigeria officially became a federal republic. Hallelujah. Why am I telling you this? History. So that you have an understanding. So officially today, Nigeria is 63 years as a nation, 60 years as a federal republic, and 109 years from the time of amalgamation. And yet, look at our states now. I'm not just exciting you with history. I'm provoking you. When you are 60 years or 63 or 109 years, there are fruits that must justify that longevity of time. Vision. Vision. Hallelujah. Right from the time 
of the first president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you know Chief Namdi Benjamin Azikwe. Many of you don't know Benjamin, so you add Benjamin to the list. Hallelujah. Yeah. History tells us that he was the last governor general and then the first president of Nigeria. Now, my point is this. Without a sense of history, why do you want to become a governor? Why do you want to become a leader, a house member? You do not know where we are coming from. Why do you even want to become a man of God leading a people within a nation whose history you do not understand? Are we together? History is what frames some of the things that become the policies that govern nations. You cannot bring the policy of another nation to another nation without understanding history. And then number two, destiny. Still discussing vision. You must understand history to be a visionary person. Then you must understand destiny. What is destiny? Where we are going to. There is no nation that becomes great in this kind of confusion. There is bankruptcy of clarity. The average African, the average Nigerian cannot give you a clear picture with all due respect of where we are going to. We just say we are going forward. Forward is not a location. Are we together now? Yeah. There is something called the American dream. It is a concise, clear representation of a nation, graphic enough for anyone to, because we think in pictures, and I've taught you that transformation is difficult without a reference. So ask the average young Nigerian, where are you going to? The next 10 years, what will Nigeria be like? We say, we'll be great. That is not an inspiring statement. What do, what do you mean by we'll be great? What are the indices to measure the greatness? Nations become great. Families become great. Ministries become great when they have vision. The last component of vision is an agreement to all go the same direction. You see, let me tell you this. It is impossible to have unity without vision because everybody prior to vision must have their individual pursuits and ambitions. Are we together? A vision must be clear enough to allow people give up their personal agenda and pursue something that is big, cohesive, and galvanizing enough. We do not have this as a nation, unfortunately. For some, his assignment is to make money. Another person is to make sure that he rises be above his family members. And not, with, with all these this pieces of self-driven ambitions, a nation cannot move forward. There are families that have a creed. They, they have built dynasties today because everyone will tell you what they stand to represent. Vision. So every time you see nations, families, corporations, and individuals that are stunted and are not growing, the diagnosis number one is the absence of vision. This is true for churches. The Bible says, write the vision. It says, make it plain. With all due respect, there are many spiritual platforms. This includes churches and other spiritual expressions. They cannot tell you why they exist. Why do we exist as a ministry? Someone will say to win souls. What does that mean? Another person will say to make sure that I weary the devil. What does that mean? Another person to say, I must make it. What does that mean? Vision. You cannot unite a people until you bring a creed, a statement that everyone agrees to comply with. Do you know the reason why? One of the reasons I believe why we are finding it hard to make constructive progress as a people and as a nation is because all of us have not yet agreed. And our agreement was not verified. It can two work together. Is that not in your Bible? So if I say I'm hungry, and you say I'm hungry, and you say I'm hungry, now we have a problem. What is the solution? Let us go to the restaurant. You have to verify that all of us have agreed that it is that restaurant we are going to. I may decide to go home to satisfy my hunger. Another person may decide to go to a restaurant. You can't assume that just because all of us are hungry, we all desire to go to the restaurant. No. Are we together now? So you have families who have their agenda. The father has his agenda. The mother has her agenda. 
the stubborn child who refused to get born again has his agenda the one who is a pastor has his agenda and everybody and they say let's unite there cannot be unity listen to me there cannot be unity without vision the binder of all men is vision spiritually it's the same thing you cannot walk with the Spirit of God when you have your own agenda. Are you seeing the reason why when you come to God, you truly want to walk with God, you must be willing to lay down. To lay down does not mean to ignore. To believe that God has a, a more superior plan for your life than what you will have for yourself. And that even though you do not understand Him, you must trust Him. Knowing that Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. They are thoughts of peace he says and not of evil to give you an expected end can i tell you no matter how i love myself i can never love myself more than jesus loves me are we together now so the one who died for you if he tells you i have designed a great destiny it is foolish to argue that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us and he says come I know you have your agenda you want to make it you want to be great I am aware I I, 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 I died for you you follow me and I will lead you towards a destiny that will be nothing short of glory but now you can come with your agenda are you seeing now this is not just a thing that is a national issue it will affect your own relationship with the Lord because you come with your own vision and say Lord let me see your own and he says, no, you have to follow me by faith as I unravel it. And you say, you are joking. It took me years to build this vision for my life. You want to come and deceive me to lay it down and follow you so you cheat me later and leave me alone? No. He met men who were already fishermen. They were succeeding because they knew what they were doing. And he said, come, follow me. And they laid down their agenda and followed him. Could Peter ever make himself an apostle without Jesus? Did he ever believe that he would spearhead the gospel in the capacity that he did? What of Abraham, an idol worshiper, or of the Chaldeans? He was not an irresponsible man. He was just a limited man. Yet God had a vision to make him the landlord of the earth officially. And he called him. He says, you come out of your father's house. You will never be able to make constructive progress until you have a vision that is known to all that you lead not just to you who is leading if you are the only one who knows your vision then you go alone the bible says write the vision it says make it plain so that he will run that read it hallelujah number one vision to our lives our homes our families there are many parents who whose children do not understand the vision of the family where are we going to just go to school become an adult and go dear husband what is the name of what we're doing now we're married where are we going to don't ask me that question let's just keep going wherever we die or wherever we reach is where we were going how do you lead that way imagine will you follow any man who kicks his car no matter how great the car is and he says follow me for a ride you want to have an idea even if you don't know it is comforting to know the destination okay we are going to the mall okay we are going to the police station okay we are going to the church are we together only kidnappers don't tell you where they are taking you to they don't carry you and tell you okay i'm taking you to the bush you just keep and they fire on all four cylinders and you just find yourself going almost dying but you won't die and then you get somewhere and they say come out you start walking you can't return because you don't even know where you went to and you can't bring anybody with you vision you can never live a successful life from infancy i tell you sincerely from the time we started this ministry there was a vision clearly defined clearly defined when we have retreat as the workers we read out the vision for every worker in this ministry to understand for every leader to understand you are running your company don't be telling people bring profit bring profit they don't even know what the company exists for are we together the difference between a son and a hireling is an understanding of vision and inheritance 
A hireling is not interested in where you are taking the ministry, the company, wherever. So they can steal, they can do whatever and they don't care. But a son knows that because I understand this vision, it is also my inheritance, it is also my destiny, it is my business. Are we learning now? Number two. What is the second principle that makes nations great? Is God helping us already? Let me give you an assignment. Go back home before we get to number two. Go back home. Remember, we're praying for Nigeria. and We're praying for ourselves. Go back home today and have a clearly defined vision for your life. Fathers, a clearly defined vision for your home. Ministers, a clearly defined, the great commission is not your vision. It's everybody's assignment. You must find your, your unique call. Hallelujah. You're a company. Don't rejoice and say we made profit. We're a real estate company. What is our assignment? Our assignment is that our part of the national cake must come to us. That's not an assignment. So you find out that you cannot articulate why you are there. If you do not know why you exist, why should you be promoted? Hallelujah. Go and get a clear vision for your life. This is why I exist. I like John chapter 1, 6 and 7. Here's what it says about John. There was a man, he says, sent from God, whose name was John. Verse 7 says, the same came for a witness, to bear witness to the light that all men through him might believe. The moment John forgot his vision, he started declining till he died. When Jesus came, it was not just miracles he started performing. The Bible tells us that he went, verse 15, down to 18, that it was given to him, watch this now, it was given to him the scroll of Esaias. He came to Nazareth as his custom was. And the Bible says he found the place where it was written. Vision. My meat, he said, is to do the will of him that has sent me and finish it. Paul in, in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7, he says, Lo, I come, quoting Jesus, the messianic prophecy on Jesus, in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will. Can I tell you, vision gives you focus. Vision gives you legitimacy to say no to many things. You don't have the right to say no to many things because our world is full of options. And it is not only bad things that kill. Good things that are not needed in your life can also kill you. When Satan tries bad things and it does not work, he will bring good things. His assignment is that you die, even if it's by the truth. Vision. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that Africa... African leaders, African church leaders, African political leaders, African economic leaders, Nigerian leaders will be people who will first understand the vision. Not just leave it to radio and TV houses to just coin up something, but that the leaders, that everyone himself will know that this is the vision, the Nigerian vision, the African vision. This is the vision for my family. This is the vision for the, my church or my ministry. Never call a people to join you over anything you do not understand yourself. You will be leading them towards confusion. When Moses came and met the people, he said, listen, I have come as a leader with an assignment. The assignment is that I've been sent by the God of the Hebrews to take you out of Egypt, a land of captivity, to a land flowing with milk and honey. And the people said, let's go. That's it, let's go. Vision. Number two. 